Hello everyone, welcome back to this week long series for your CA Foundation January 2025 examination week to strength. I hope you already have become little more stronger than before and today let us make the topic of valuation of inventory our strength. The kind of uniqueness about this topic is I did not pick this topic but you asked me to do it. So, here is a topic that you wanted me to do. If there is any other topic that you would want me to cover, please do mention in the comments so that in the next 2-3 days I can come up with a video on that and let me help you in your preparations of examinations. So, let us get started. Let me just give you one brief idea as to what do you mean when we say forward reconciliation, what is reconciliation and what can be backward reconciliation. Whenever we try to prepare our financial statements, both statement of profit or loss as well as balance sheet. In our financial statements, we would want to include the value of inventory. We want to write the value of inventory in our statement of profit or loss to determine profit. We want to write inventory in our balance sheet to get correct financial position. So, to evaluate financial performance as well as to evaluate financial position, we need the right value of inventory. With incorrect value of inventory, our performance and position both will be measured incorrectly. And this valuation will be done by maintaining stock records. It will be anyways verified by doing the physical verification of the inventory that is there in our uh, go down anymore. So, what we do is we go into the go down and then count the inventory physically. Whenever we count the physical inventory, it might not happen on the year end. We would want to count it on the year end 31st March. But what if it is unable, we are unable to count it on 31st March due to any reason. So, in that case, we might count the inventory on the date before 31st March or sometimes after 31st March. If I count the inventory before 31st March, let us say 25th of March, starting with the inventory on 25th March, I want to arrive at the inventory on 31st March. So, I go forward. So, I take 25th March inventory and then I come. Then I will ask them to provide me with the data for the transactions that have happened from 26th to 31st. So, those 6 days whatever transactions they give, if it is resulting in inflow of inventory, I will add it to the inventory was on 25th March. If it is resulting in outflow of inventory, I will deduct it from the inventory was on 25th March. So, by doing this adding of inflow, deduction of outflow of inventory, I will arrive at the inventory that should be there on 31st March in my balance sheet as well as trading account which is part of our statement of profit or loss. This is forward. What is backward? I could not count the inventory on 31st March. I counted the inventory on 5th April or 6th April. From 5th or 6th April, I want to come back and find the inventory on 31st March. How do I find the inventory on 31st March? Keeping 5th or 6th of April's inventory in my count. So, what I will do is 5th of 6th of April's physical inventory data is available with me. I will ask the client to provide me with the information for what has happened from 31st March to 5th or 6th April. Basically, transactions for 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, those 5 days transactions. Among those transactions, I will classify them into inflows and outflows. If we are going forward, we add inflow and deduct outflow. If we are going backward, we will do ULTA. Whatever is outflow will be added whatever is inflow will be deducted because we are doing it as a backward problem. That is all you should need to know. To summarize it in a minute or in a simple statement, if the physical taking, if the physical counting, if the physical verification of the inventory has happened before the year end, for the transactions from the physical verification to the year end, we add inflow, deduct outflow. If the physical verification has happened after the year end, for the transactions from the year end, to the date, whatever has happened, inflows will be deducted and outflows will be added. Postscript, one small point to note, whenever you are dealing with sales and sales return, remember to adjust the profit margin. So, come on guys, let us now solve question number 5 from our September 2024 examination. This is 5A and this is on violation of inventories, forward reconciliation. Let us start reading. Physical verification of the stock was done on 23rd of June 2023. Before I read any further, read the last line of the question. Determine the value of the stock as on 30th of June. If I wanted the inventory on 30th of June, I should have counted it on 30th June. But maybe some unforeseen situations, unforeseen circumstances, 
the organization's business could not be paused on 30th. So, we have counted on 23rd June. On 23rd June, inventory in my godown is 4 lakh 80. I have to start with this inventory of 4 lakh 80 thousand on 23rd June. And I have to arrive at what would have been my inventory on 30th of June. To do this, I need to know all the transactions that has happened between 23rd and 30th. So, that is also provided to us. The following transactions took place between 23rd and 30th June. Between these three, two days, 23rd and 30th, if there is any inflow of inventory, it would be added. If there is any outflow of inventory, it should be deducted. And meanwhile, I need to also keep in mind the substance over form with regard to consignment as well as goods sent on return or approval. Remember, if I have only the ownership or if, sorry, if I have only the possession or I have the ownership. So, you need to check up on that and then adjust it as well. Let's start. Solution to question number 5, September 2024. So, I will start with physical inventory as on 23rd June. I would write this as 4,80,000 rupees. Next, out of the goods sent, already goods are sent. It is not between these two dates. Goods sent on consignment. See, I have sent goods on consignment. Whenever I send, I have not yet sold. Consignment is an agent and principal relationship. I have an agent. I am the principal. I have given the goods to my agent to sell the goods on my behalf. I have only given the goods to my agent. I have not sold it to my agent. So, though the inventory is there with my agent, I have the ownership. I do not have the physical possession of the inventory with me, but I have the ownership. That is my inventory. I have to include it in my stock. This inventory is sent to the extent of 24,000. This is remaining unsold with my consignee. I am consigner. So, I am the owner. I do not have the position. On 23rd June, when I counted the inventory in my godown, it has come to 4,80,000. In that 4,80,000, this 24,000 is not counted. Why? Because this 24,000 is lying with my consignee, who is not the owner, but only the safekeeper of the inventory. He will sell the inventory on my behalf, collect commission from me. So, the inventory, what belongs to me, but it is not there in my go down, is 24,000. Because I am the owner and this is not physically counted and not included in 480. I will add this 24,000 worth of inventory to my 480,000 worth of inventory, bringing it into my stock. Next item, purchase of rupees 40,000 were made. So, I have made purchase of 40,000 worth of inventory. This is between 23rd and 30th June. Out of this, 16,000 were delivered on 5th July. Remember, I am counting the inventory for 30th June 2023. My starting point is 23rd June. I have purchased inventory worth 40. In 40,000, 16,000 is received on 5th July. Though I receive it on 5th July, I have already purchased it. I have to make my accounting policy, right? Am I going to record the inventory when I purchase it or am I going to record it only when I physically receive it? Based on this policy, you treat this. If your accounting policy is to record the inventory surely on physical receipt of inventory, in that case, this 16,000 is not recorded into our inventory though it is purchased. Why? Because this 16,000 is not received before 30th June. It is only received later. However, I can make my accounting policy in a more logical way stating that I will record the inventory when I purchase it. Do I receive it or I do not receive it? Have I, have I received the 16? No. But have I purchased it? Yes. So, I should not restrict myself to recording the inventory to the extent of 24,000 only which is received. Out of 40, 24 received, 16 not yet received, but total 40 is purchased. It is between those two dates. After 23rd, I purchased this. So, on 23rd, my inventory what I counted, 4,80,000 does not include this 40,000, but it is still mine because I have purchased. So, I need to include this into my inventory to find the inventory on 30th June. 23rd June, inventory 4,80,000. After 23rd, before 30th, I have purchased 40. This is not there in the go down on 23rd, so I have not counted. I will add this 40,000 of inventory to 4,80,000 to find inventory on 30th June. Let me add here. Add. Goods purchased between 23rd June and 30th June, 40. You can instead choose to add 24 separately, 16 separately. Usually, if you refer the suggested answer, that is what they do. They will add 24,000 goods received separately. They will add 16,000 stock in transit separately. 
and I have made my assumption pretty clear here. I have written it that in the absence of specific mention, it is assumed that purchases are recorded on the receipt of invoice and not only on physical receipt of inventory. Alternatively, organization can assume that inventory has to be recorded merely on physical receipt. In that case, only 24,000 will be added. That 16,000 what will be received in July will not be added. And for your reference, if you had doubt with that earlier part of consignment, I have a note given on that also. We are consigner, we are not consignee. We have ownership, we do not have possession. So, though the inventory is lying with consignee, it will be included in our inventory based on substance over form. Yeah, sorry, based on the ownership that we own and not the physical possession. So, I have added it to my inventory. There. Both the adjustments in detail explained. Let us go to the third one. Sales were 1,36,000 of which 32,000 were sent on return or approval basis. See, out of 1,36,000, the sales that has happened between 23rd and 30th June, 32,000 is sent on return or approval basis. Sent on return or approval basis, as the name itself says, it is not sale, it is only sent. When will it become sale? Only when it is approved. If it is not approved, it is not sale. If it is not sale, inventory belongs to me. That means I have the ownership but I won't have the physical possession of the inventory. Why? I have sent, isn't it? So, this inventory should be included into my stock, but not at the selling price, but at the cost price. Remember, 23rd June, this inventory is with me. Between the 23rd and 30th June, I have issued. Only to the extent this inventory is sold, it will be deducted from my inventory. After 23rd June, before 30th June, whatever is sold will be deducted at cost price. First, let me write the inventory at 1,36,000 and I will say out of this sales by way of sending on return or approval basis is 32,000. How much would be the normal sales in that case? 1,36 minus 32 which comes to 1,4. This will be deducted from my inventory as on 23rd June after eliminating profit. Cost of goods sold has to be deducted because that is the only extent to which outflow has happened. Next, half of these goods were returned by 30th June. Out of this 32,000 what was sent on return or approval basis, half of the inventory sent back to me. They told it, they sent it back to me saying that they do not want it. So, this is not sales. So, this need not be adjusted. But no information is available regarding the remaining. So, I gave him goods worth 32,000. In that 16,000, he gave it back to me. Balance 16,000 is lying with my customer, but he has not accepted. It will be called as sales only when the time lapses or when he accepts. Either here, neither the time has lapsed nor has he accepted. So, I will not call them sales. If they are not sales, I will not deduct it. It is there with customer, but it belongs to me. On 23rd June, this was there in our godown. When we counted it, it was there in our godown. Only after that, we have sent it. So, I do not have to deduct this separate. Let me show it to you here. Observe. See, goods are only sent, goods are not sold. Half of them were returned by 30th June. In the absence of specific information, it is assumed that time to return has not lapsed. So, entire 3,20,000 worth of goods belongs to us. Half he returned, half he has not accepted, entire 320 belongs to us. I have taken the physical count on 23rd June. On 23rd June, inventory is in my godown only. I have already counted it. So, I do not have to add it separately. So, we are starting with physical inventory on 23rd June. This includes such stock which is later sent on return or approval basis. As starting point already includes such stock, there is no need to add it separately. However, it is not sales. I will eliminate it from my sales. That is what I did here. From 1,36,000 sales, I have eliminated goods sent on return or approval basis 32,000. So, making my normal sales to the extent of 1 lakh. This normal sales after eliminating profit, I will get COGS that will be deducted from my inventory as on 23rd June. Let us read the last adjustment. Goods were sold at cost plus 25 percent. So, if the cost is 100, profit is 25, selling price is 125. If I take that cost 100 and profit 25, I will do 25 by 100. Profit by cost, I will get 25 percent. Instead of taking profit by cost, if I take profit by sales, it will be 25 by 125. So, that is 1 by 5. So, on 1 by 4 is the profit on cost, 1 by 5 is the profit on sale. 
so i need to eliminate one fifth from my sales to arrive the, the cost of goods sold so usually goods are sold at cost plus 25 percent but there is one exceptional case goods costing 24000 have been sold for 12000 some special variety of goods whose cost is 24000 is sold for 12000 so selling price is 12000 some variety of items selling price is 12000 its cost is 24 so when you sell 24000 worth of inventory for 12 you have incurred loss of 12000 this is an abnormal item normally sales are made at 25 percent more than cost but this is one special item which is sold at loss now tell me how much is a normal sales total sales 1 lakh 4 in that abnormal sales is 12000 normal sales will be 1 lakh 4 minus 12 which comes to 9888 it's about 92000 1 lakh 4 minus 12 1 lakh 2 92 yeah 92000 and on this what is the profit 25 percent is on cost so cost 100 profit 25 selling price 125 25 by 100 on cost 25 by 125 on sale 25 by 125 is 1 by 5 or you might remember it with the logic like 1 by 4 on cost is 1 by 5 on sale do the same 25 percent on cost means 20 percent on sales which is 1 by 5 apply 1 fifth of 92,000 profit comes to be how much 18,400 you deduct the profit you will get cost of 73,600 cost of abnormal sales is 24000 cost of normal sales is 73600 add them together to arrive at cost of goods sold of 97600 or alternatively you can take loss of 12 profit of 18400 and write net profit of 6400 from total sales of 104 you deduct this profit of 6400 you will get cost of goods sold as 97600 this 97,600 worth of inventory was there in your go down on 23rd June. When you counted the inventory, you have counted this. After 23rd June, before 30th June, you have sent, you have dispatched, you have sold inventory worth 97,600. So, as on 30th June, it's not yours. You are trying to find the inventory of 30th June, starting with 23rd June. So, this is outflow. Deduct this 97,600 cost of goods sold. And there you have the inventory as on that goods and on return or approval as no adjustment. Cost of goods sold 97,600. And you get book inventory as on 30th June 4,46,400. The same answer in the suggested answer, they have tweaked it a little, presented the answer slightly differently. This 40,000 purchases is written as 24 and 16 separately. And they have also adjusted goods and on return or approval separately and cost of goods sold separately. But I have clubbed them together and by way of a working note and then sold it. I hope this gave you a clear understanding as to how do we deal with forward reconciliation.